but I feel like with my method, he'll still have like a face with skin. <laughs> I'm having a weird week. The other day I noticed, if you watch all the Star Wars movies, back to back, in order and really pay close attention, you're a friggin' loser. <laughs> Yeah, um, some of these are gonna, be, are gonna be jokes, that's not one of them. <laughs> so I actually live in Alaska, everybody, that's where I live. And uh, I live in Alaska, somebody heard of it. Um, and uh, my family's freezing right now because I took, took the fireplace. Um, <laughs> what a jerk this guy is, left his family. They should have just got one from here. Uh, I do live in Alaska and you probably know a lot about comedy if you've been to comedy shows before and you probably know the best comedians in the world, you know, they live in New York City, right? They live in Los Angeles. And um, I live in Alaska because I don't like uh, competition. <laughs> yeah, you guys, I am killing it up there, man. It's ridiculous, I'm not trying to brag, but it's like me and a moose that makes faces. Like that's all there is. <laughs> Like I'm owning it. Like I don't know if they told you guys, but right now you guys are watching the number one ranked comedian in Fairbanks, Alaska. Right now, that's what's happening. It's a big deal. It's a big deal. But there's always a reason people live in, in weird places. And I live there because I met a girl, you know, that happens sometimes. And I was performing at this uh, comedy club up there. And it was a weird club. Like there was no fireplace. And, um, <laughs> We just did it anyway, and so we went up there, and I met the owner of the bar, and he was like a real Alaskan guy, you know, like tough, like he had like a beard, and a lot of people in Alaska, they wear like a hatchet, like on their belt. I don't know if you've been to Alaska, but when you're there, sometimes trees will just come right out at you. They'll just come attack you. <laughs> Saw people wear the hatchet. You don't want that in the pocket. That's, that'll take too much time. Um, if the tree wants you, you know, and uh, so he was like a tough looking guy, and I was already intimidated by him. Then he started talking to this really, really attractive girl, you know? And then she walked away and I go up to the owner and I go, hey man, who is that? And he goes, that's my daughter. <laughs> and I go, cool, cool. I was, I was just asking who everybody was. <laughs> and, um, and who is that? <laughs> and who's that over there, yeah! <laughs> I'm not trying to get with anybody. This is just how I talk before the show. I'm warming up my voice. Please don't kill me with a hatchet. <laughs> but she's much tougher than I am because she grew up in Alaska, you know, and I'm, I'm not like a tough guy. Like even our parenting styles are different. Like I'm more like, a, I worry a lot. Like I'm an over worrier. And um, she's more like, let the kid make a mistake and then they'll never do it again. You know, that type of parenting. Do you support that type of parenting? Well, like the other day, um, there was a boiling pot of water on the stove. <laughs> And my three-year-old toddler started walking towards the water and I freaked out. I was like, dude, stop right there. Hot water, no. And my wife goes, hey, let him touch it. If he touches it, he'll never do it again. And I go, yeah, I don't uh, disagree with you. <laughs> I think you're probably right that if he touches boiling water, uh, he'll never do it again. But I feel like with my method, he'll still have like a face with skin. <laughs> I'm sure you're right, I'm not trying to argue with you. I th I'm sure you're right, I think the nub will be a reminder to him to not touch boiling water. We're both right, I'm just throwing out other ideas, because I had trouble with girls, you know, and I had a, an intact face, and so. <laughs> Just trying to help out our boy, you know? My, my wife's like pretty nuts though. She'd be like, let him drown. He'll never do it again. You know what? I'm gonna save him. I'm gonna get him out of there. Cause I'd rather have three children than just two really well behaved children. I'm sure you're right. Again, I'm sure you're right. He probably won't drown again. She's so much tougher than me. Sometimes I think she purposely tries to scare me. Like she took me hiking 
And um, as we were hiking on all the trees, there were signs that said, while you're hiking, you should clap. Does anybody know why you're supposed to clap? When you're that's exactly right, bears. Are there bears here? Do you guys have bears? Yeah. Do you? So what, that guy clapped like he knows one. <laughs> He's like, oh yeah, I have a bear in my yard. I own a bear. It's like, wow, I have a whole circus. <laughs> what type of bears do you guys got here? What do you got? Black, Black bears mostly, okay. Cause I don't know, I gotta learn at some point the difference between, you know, there's a certain bear. When you see it, you're supposed to act all tall and scary. And then there's like another bear where if you see it, you're supposed to pretend you're dead. And I just always forget to, to Google it. Um, Cause wouldn't that be like so embarrassing if like you're up to a bear, you're like, oh my God, a bear. And you're like, ah! And the bear's like, wrong bear, dude. I'm gonna kill you. <laughs> you're like, oh. And then he's like, you can't play dead now. You're just yelling at me. <laughs> Pretending you were bigger than me. I'm not stupid. I'm not like that other bear. I don't know which one's which. But yeah, as we were hiking, it said, you, should, you're, you were exactly right, you should clap to let the bears know you're coming. Because I don't know if you guys know like a lot about bears. I just happen to know like a little bit about them just because like from living in Alaska. But basically bears, they'll be like in the woods, just like hanging out, you know, and they'll be like, oh man, what do you, what do you want to do? What should we do today? And the, the other bear's like, dude, let's kill somebody. <laughs> let's attack some people. He's like, yeah, let's totally do it. Let's, let's attack the next people. They come around the corner, and then people come around the corner, and they hear the clapping, and they're like, oh, but it sounds like they're having such a good time. <laughs> let's not ruin, I mean, they're, they're just having such a, they're clapping, and right, let's wait for a crowd of booing people, and then we'll attack <laughs> the booers, because I don't want to interrupt. That just sounds like so much fun. <laughs> I think it's good to have that sign that's safe. You want to have a sign that says, if you know, clap so the bears know you're coming, that's important. But I think they should have another sign below that one that says, if you do see a bear attacking someone, at that point, you, you, you should stop clapping. <laughs> do you know what I mean? Because the bear's gonna think you're cheering him on. That's what's gonna happen. He's gonna be like, you like this? I wasn't even gonna attack that other guy, but I'm gonna do it. I wasn't even gonna, but I'm getting an applause break over here. We get, Alaska is a weird place. We get um, some times of the year, it will be only one hour of daylight for the entire day. And some people don't like that. And I go, dude, that's my favorite. It's my favorite time of the year. I just feel so like productive. <laughs> you know, I'm like, man, what, what I do today, I did stuff all day today. Yeah, from sun up to sundown. <laughs> yeah, I was working till the wee hours of the afternoon all day today, just doing it, getting stuff done. So I live in Alaska now, but I am from New York originally. And uh, New York was a little too expensive for me. I lived in New York City, and um, I had to live in a studio apartment, which I, I don't know if everybody here knows what a studio apartment is. Basically, it's where you live in one room and you pretend like that's freaking okay. <laughs> that you live in a room. Uh, my friend came over once, and he was like, dude, I heard you had a new apartment in the city. I thought maybe you could show me around the place, which, uh, I don't know if you guys ever, have ever given a tour of a studio apartment. <laughs> but it always sort of goes the same way. You know, you're like, okay, right here we have the... And they just start crying because your life is crap. <laughs> That's how the tour ends, you know. <laughs> crying because you're 40 and your bed is next to your stove. <laughs> Let me tell you something. If you can cook pancakes from bed, you have made some bad decisions. <laughs> You've made a series of bad mistakes, not just one. <laughs> My friend was trying to help me. He was like, dude, why don't you put up a mirror on the wall and then it will make it look like it's bigger, which is not a bad idea. And so I actually tried it. I put up a giant mirror on the wall, right? And then it, it just looked like there were two guys living in crappy apartments right next to each other. <laughs> two losers in matching outfits. <laughs> Like, oh my God, that guy's lying on the floor and crying too. <laughs> How about that? <laughs> so, New York is, I, I don't even know if I was smart enough to live in New York. Cause I remember this one time I tried to do the New York Times crossword puzzle, which I don't know if you ever tried that. Oh my goodness, man. Sometimes I didn't even have to read the entire clue to figure out I, I wasn't gonna get it. <laughs> 
Like, I didn't even need all the words. You know, it was like, what Portuguese? I don't know. I don't know one Portuguese thing. Seriously, I wouldn't be able to get this one if you let me write the rest of the question. Seriously, I don't know anything about the city of Portuguese. I'm telling you the truth. I got nothing. So I went to college in New York. Do we have any, do we have any college students here tonight by round of applause, you guys out there? Look at you guys. Will somebody yell right out what school you go to? How about in the middle there? Yell right out. BYU. BYU, I love that. BYU, that's the big school around here. I like how you didn't even give me the full words. You were just like, here's some letters. Why don't you figure it out? <laughs> BYU, why don't you Google it, stranger? <laughs> no, I understand you're probably like in a hurry so you can only just have time for just the first letters. They keep them real busy over there at that place. Uh, and, what, and a last question, what, do you, what are you studying over there at BYU? Actuarial science. Yeah, actuarial science, which I would recommend just calling it AS. <laughs> yeah, just to save time. Just for... Just for like, you, you know, that's what you are doing before. Um, that's a great, that's a great major, of course. With that, you become, you say it, I don't want to both say it at the same. <laughs> Same exact time. Actuary. An actuary, you actuary become an actuary. <laughs> no, you actuary do, you actuary, be, actuary, I'm so confused. No, that's a good, well, that's, a, that's an awesome, I still don't know what it is. He's told me a lot of information, I'm no closer to knowing what actuary it actually is. Well, no, it's some with math, right? Is it math in there? There is good, that's good. You like math? Yes. Okay, good, because that'd be weird if it, you were in math and every day you were like, ah, more numbers. <laughs> I hate math, why did I do this whole thing? Uh, a lot of people don't like math, and I think I know um, when it happens, it's when you're in school and all of a sudden it's stopping applicable to regular life. Isn't that kind of like, remember adding and subtracting? Nobody hated that because it's useful in regular life with regular everyday problems, you know, like say, there's 13 of us, right? We have a 12 pack of beer. <laughs> you gotta figure it out, right? 12 of you need to leave. And thanks so much for talking to me. I appreciate it I, uh, about the college. And because uh, I was doing a show, you guys all clapped when I said about colleges. You guys, this is a smart crowd. I can, I'm not. I'm not uh, just saying that. I could tell immediately you guys were going to be a good crowd and a smart crowd. There's, that's not true every night for us. Okay, every night is not like I was doing a show last week. I was in um, whatever city makes it funny for you. And so I come on, I go, anybody here, you know, go to college, you know, make some noise. Where you guys had clapped, that place, dead silence. Seriously, nobody clapped. People were just looking at me like angry that I had brought it up. So I was panicking. I'm like, I got to change this question, you know, so some people can answer. So I go, that's okay. You know, anybody here ever know anybody that went to college? <laughs> nobody. Um... Any, any of you ever drive by a college? <laughs> Anybody know how to spell college? <laughs> what, what if I let you work in groups? <laughs> Has anyone ever made a collage? <laughs> Thank you so much for laughing at that. They did not laugh at it in, <laughs> in whatever city you picked. This one guy came up to me after the show and he was like, hey, comedy guy. And I was like, what's up, man? You know? And he goes, he goes, what in the heck's a studio apartment? And so I explained to him what it was. He'd never heard of it, you know? And he goes, do you realize for, for that much money that you spent, you could get in this town like a 10 bedroom house on about 20 acres of land? And I was like, I know, man, but the only problem is out the front door, you gotta, you gotta live here. <laughs> I 
some people got offended by that and we didn't even name the place. They're just like, oh, those poor people of that fake town. I feel bad for those pretend people. So, <laughs> been trying to get in shape. It's hard, it's hard getting in shape. You guys look good here, by the way. You guys, look, you guys look really good. Do we have any big workout fanatics here tonight with us, big workout fans? <laughs> Anybody ever know anybody that worked out? <laughs> anybody ever worked outside a gardener? Anybody ever worked out on a collage? I don't like it in there, in the gym, I don't like. I saw one guy, I went in the gym and he was working out, um, he was working out his neck. Like, get his head on the neck machine. And um, I don't, I'm not, I'm not here to make fun of anybody. It's just when I saw him, it, it just looked as if maybe, maybe the, the rest of his body did not have a membership. <laughs> to the, like, maybe he was like, could it be cheaper if I just do the neck? Is there a way I could get a discount if I just do neck? And I'm not here to make fun of him. His neck, it was beautiful. I'm t it, I mean, it could have been on the cover of Neck Magazine. Like, it was a beautiful neck. I'm not here to make fun of that. I just found myself in awe of this man. I just was watching him and I was just like, why, like what could be going on in your life? <laughs> like seriously, what is going on in your life that you realize, man, now's the time to get my neck going. <laughs> I was laying in bed that night trying to figure out like, why does this guy need a strong neck? Like maybe he got like a really heavy hat for Christmas. <laughs> Oh, gotta go back to the gym. Still can't wear it. Gotta go back. <laughs> For the new year, I told myself I would try new things. And I was walking out of the gym recently and they were starting a spinning class. And so I said, you know what? I'm gonna try that because I told myself I'd try new things. And if you've never been to one, I love to ride bicycles, like with my friends. It's not like that. <laughs> it's like really hard, you know? And, uh, and I went in there and first of all, I looked at the instructor. If you've never been to once a bunch of exercise bikes, and then there's an instructor, and he makes up some sort of imaginary terrain in his head. Then you follow along your bikes according to whatever he said. And first of all, I didn't like the guy. You ever just see someone you go, I don't, I don't, don't like him? <laughs> For no reason. Like, first of all, he's wearing a helmet. Like, what could happen? <laughs> you got a helmet on, seriously. <laughs> what, are we gonna be weaving in and out of cars? What are you talking? He had a helmet, and then we start off, and he's like, okay, everybody, nice flat road up ahead, nice and easy, so we're all warming it up. Then he goes, oh, a little bit of a hill, let's go up to level two. So you go up to two, and we were on two for like 10 seconds, and he goes, oh, it's another hill, let's go up to three. We're on three for like 30 seconds. He goes, oh, it's another hill, let's go up to four. 10 seconds, he goes, another, I start thinking, this guy should have gone a different route, probably. <laughs> it was a horrible bicycle ride. Why don't you test it out first, buddy? before you take a bunch of strangers on it. I think it should have gone the other way. It was awful and it got worse and worse, like level, you know, nine, 10, 11, 12. We got to 13, I couldn't even get my feet around the thing without standing up, it was so hard. And were you up another hill and I just raised my hand, I'm like, sir, I gotta stop you. Uh, I don't know a lot about topography, but what I do know is we should be coming down the freaking hill by now. <laughs> I don't know if you've ever been to the hills outside of your head, but there's a second half of them that's awesome. <laughs> it's the downhill parts, or it's everyone's favorite half of a hill. And he just keeps going, he just ignores me. And you guys, I was having trouble, but man, the lady behind me, she was having like a lot of trouble. And I don't wanna like make fun of her, but every time we go up a hill, she would make a new noise. <laughs> And I'm not here to make fun of her, I'll just try to mimic exactly the noises that I heard. So we go up a hill and behind me I just hear, ha! I'm like, what could that be? What's happening? Is there a clown back there? What's going on? I don't know. But I didn't turn around because I didn't want to make her feel, but we go up another hill, I just hear, ha! I'm like, what, did the clown die? What's happening? Is that a ghost? What's going on back there? But I want to make her feel bad, so I just eye straight forward. But she was having, you guys, she was having trouble. I think the instructor could tell because he was trying to kind of wrap it up. So he goes, okay, everybody, we're gonna do one more hill. We're done for the day. So he goes, let's just do level 25, ride it out, then we're done. And you guys, she must have tried it because I will never forget the two noises I heard next. I just heard, hi, and then I heard like that. And I go, you know what, I'm turning around. I deserve it, I've waited long enough. 
And I turn around and the lady has fallen off of her bicycle. Yeah, and at first I was like, oh man, I missed it. But she was okay, she was like still making noises, so she's still okay. But as I reflect on that day, like the weirdest part of it was, like, like no, nobody went to help her. I know, I guess we all just sort of figured like, hey, you know, if you fall off a bike that's not moving, that that's kind of your fault. This one's on you, okay? Do you know what I mean? Because if, if you had just stopped pedaling, that would have become a chair. So you had that option, so you should have just made it into a chair. And then what did we do? Did we call the front desk? Did we call 911? No, you know what we did? We just all fake rode away. Like, let's get out of here! She's still there, what's happening? So, my wife's, my wife's cool, man. We, um, we do argue sometimes, but I think that's just normal, right? I mean, men and women living in one house and we're like so different. That's just what's gonna happen. And I don't think either of us mean to get on each other's nerves. I think it's just something that happens, you know? Like my wife likes to do this thing where she wakes up an hour before me. She drinks a bunch of coffee. And then she starts yelling at me <laughs> as if I have also been up drinking coffee. <laughs> but I haven't, like my eyes are closed. I'm in bed, which I feel like is sort of like the international symbol for, hey, leave me alone. <laughs> I'm sleeping. I'm just saying like rarely do you see someone with their eyes closed in a bed and go like, what's that guy doing, fishing? No. <laughs> He's sleeping, always, you know. But she loved to get up early, you know, and she'd always say the same thing to me, you know, she'd wake me up, hey, Jamie, wake up, you gotta get up. I'm like, oh my, oh my goodness, what's happening? What's going on? It's like, and she'd always say the same thing. She'd always go, listen, you know what we should do today? Which, by the way, no woman has ever said, do you know what we should do today? Followed by something awesome. <laughs> It's, it's kind of always something only they would like to do. You know? it's, never, it's never awesome, you know? It's, ne it's never like, you know what we should do today? What? I thought I'd massage you and you'd watch basketball. Oh my goodness, I'm awake. I did not expect that. I would have actually gotten up last night if I thought that was gonna happen. I would have gotten up an hour before I went to sleep if I thought there was a chance of a massage or some basketball. But. You guys, you know, that, that, that's not what happens. It's not what happened. Instead, she goes, you know what we should do today? And I go, what? And she goes, I want us to go to the craft store. <laughs> Which, did you hear that in the room? <laughs> that tension, like all I said was craft store and you could hear a lot of different emotions. <laughs> like a guy right back there was just like, Ugh, did you hear that? <laughs> like he'd been punched in the stomach. He was like, oh. And all the, some of the women I could hear you getting like excited, like inside your like, you're like, oh my goodness, I actually need, uh, I need googly eyes. That is so weird he said that, I need googly eyes. We are fresh out of googly eyes. We have like one left, which makes no sense. They should sell them in even numbers. Are there crafty people here? My wife is like super crafty and it's, it's, it's cool that she has a hobby. And if there's any like young people and I'm losing you on this, I'll just tell you real quick, basically crafting just to explain it to you. It's basically like, so you could buy something at a store, right? <laughs> but for a little bit more money. <laughs> you could make a crappier version. with no Yelp reviews, <laughs> with no way to return it without hurting someone's feelings. <laughs> oh, my wife was, she was good at it. She was like really, really crafty. But it was just like for me, like where I'm coming from is it was just, it, it was, it was a stressful for me. Because I would have trouble, I'm not the smartest guy, I would have trouble figuring out like in our house what was valuable and what was trash. 
Like it was almost impossible to figure it out. I remember I upset my wife this one time. Like she got so upset, you guys. And that's the, that's the last thing I want is my wife to be upset. And she got upset and you know what I did? All I did was I threw away an empty sauce jar. That's all I did, right? And my wife wakes up, she goes, where did the sauce jar go that was on the counter? I go, I, I threw it away. And she goes, why would you throw it away? And I go, uh, it, was, it was out of sauce. <laughs> Is this some kind of trick question or something? There was no sauce in it, you know, so I threw it away. Because I remember when we had bought it, we were like, we need sauce. I thought that's why we'd been, we'd been keeping it around. <laughs> For the sauce that was in it, you know. That's what it says on the outside of the bottle. I wouldn't want someone to open it like, oh, somebody took it. <laughs> so that's, that's kind of why I threw it away. And she goes, well, I was gonna make a craft with that. And I go, well, there's no way, you know, I would have known that, you know, because I still only have just the five senses still. <laughs> Still, still being a human, you know. <laughs> and would you believe, and, that's, and I don't want to upset her, but would you believe 24 hours later, I did almost the exact same thing. I threw away, you know the things the eggs come in? What are they called? A a the egg carton. Which, by the way, do you feel that silence? <laughs> I just want to tell you, guys, if you see an egg carton, you just leave it, you leave it right where it is. <laughs> you don't touch it. The egg carton is like the Bitcoin of Pinterest. <laughs> They fluctuate in value, you know. There's only a finite amount on earth, just don't touch it. <laughs> Nobody told me that, you know. I just woke up and I saw an egg carton and it was empty and I don't like clutter. And so the recycle truck was driving by and I was like, oh my goodness, that guy loves these. And so I ran out there. <laughs> He's got a whole truck full of them. And so I went out there, loves them. And so I threw it in the truck and I come back inside and my wife is staying there. And she's like, where did the egg carton go that was on the counter? I go, no. No, you're kidding me. No, you didn't, no. I, th I threw it in And she's like, what? And I go, I, th uh. I couldn't even tell her. And I didn't want to tell her. I threw it in the guy's truck. I go, if she finds out about that guy, she'll start dating him. How can I compete with that? He's got a whole truck full of craft items. All the egg cartons you could want. He probably has some facility. I'm not telling her about that. I can't, com can't compete with that. I go, honey, I'm, I go, I'm, I'm, I'm really sorry. And she goes, why would you throw it away? And I go, I, you know, it's out of eggs. <laughs> Mainly, you know, that was probably the number one reason, you know. Because I woke up and I was like, you know, you can't, you know, cook that for breakfast. Everybody will die. <laughs> so I threw it away. And so I'm just nervous all the time in my own home. Like it's been eight years since I threw something away. Yeah, like if you came to my house and you were like, dude, where's your garbage? I don't know. I don't know where it is. And if you find it, don't even tell me. Because I don't want to get in trouble anymore. Seriously, when I'm done with something, I just pile it up on her side of the bed. Like a gentleman, you know? Let her soar through when she has time, you know? She walks in like, what are all these dirty diapers doing here? I'm like, I don't know, maybe you're making some sort of poop quilt. How am I supposed to know what is valuable and what is trash? I don't know. I don't know anymore. I don't know what's happening. Just being safe. But I guess my whole point, you guys, is just, it's just sometimes we don't want, like, I, don't, I just don't want to go to the craft store. You just don't want to go, but you don't, you oftentimes don't get a choice even if you try to get out of it. Like I try to get out of it every single time. She goes, well, honey, I'd like you to go to the craft store with me. And I go, oh, I don't, I don't wanna. <laughs> I go, what, is there any way I could not go? And she goes, no, you know, I'd, re I'd really like you to go. And I go, uh, what do you imagine my role would be <laughs> at the craft store? Like, what exactly are you expecting from this guy right here? Yeah. 
And she goes, well, I want your opinion. You know, sometimes I find two things alike. I'm not sure which one to get. I want to know what you think, you know? And I go, oh, okay, uh, I don't care. <laughs> yeah, about any of it, you know? So that's how I feel about all that stuff, so. Maybe you could go by yourself, you know, if you find two things you like, you could hold them up and imagine me going, I don't care. <laughs> and then I could just stay here, you know, and then that way both of us would be happy instead of just those of us that are you again. <laughs> and then I don't even remember the argument ending and all of a sudden I was just, I was just pushing a cart. And it smelled like pine cones. I'm like, you gotta be kidding me. <laughs> I feel like this happens to guys more than women. I could be wrong, but I, I get in like these bad moods in my friend where everyone I see, I just wanna, I'm not gonna do it, but I wanna punch him. <laughs> just like everybody, for no good reason. I saw this guy and all it was, he had a brass rooster in his cart. <laughs> and it just infuriated me, the whole thing. <laughs> It made me, I wanted to punch him, punch the rooster. Like, why is he buying? It just made me so mad for so, on so many levels. Like, f first of all, why are they selling them? <laughs> Second of all, why are you, why you buying them? Now you're, you're encouraging them? <laughs> and I go, what are, you, what are you making a metal farm? Like, what's happening? Why would you, why would you need that? And I'm just in a bad mood and I'm pushing my car and I'm not paying attention. I go around the corner, I hit carts against this guy because I wasn't paying attention, he wasn't paying attention. I look up and it was this really old guy, right? Like a much older man. And I could tell when I was little, I want to punch everybody. I could tell in his head, he was like, help, <laughs> help me. I could tell. And I go, oh dude, I feel so bad. And I saw it, I saw the look in his eye. I didn't even know what to do. I just saluted him. Um, I said, thank you for your service because I just, is that what you say? I don't even know. I just thinking this guy has probably been going to craft stores for 60 or 70 years every single week. Then I started thinking this guy was probably around before they even had craft stores. He probably hadn't to go out in the forest to get pine cones. This poor guy, he's fighting bears so somebody can make a bird feeder nobody wants. The guy's my hero, you know? And so finally, I can't find my wife anywhere, and finally I see her, and I walk over, and I'm like, honey, how do, you know, how do, we, how do we get out of here? Like, what has to happen for us to, to get out of here? Because I'm losing it! And she goes, oh, I'm so glad you're here. And I go, what's going on? She goes, I need your help. I go, what do you need my help with? And she goes, which one of these should we get? And you got, for a million dollars, for one million dollars in cash, I could not tell you what she was holding. Like, I'm not trying to be a jerk. I just don't even know what, it's like a ball, but not balls that, you, you know, like sport balls. It was just like decorative balls. And so she's like, which one of these is better? And I'm like, I don't know how to, I don't know how to play. I don't know what's happening. Why would one be better? You know, I hate, I hate all of them. And everything in here, everybody, especially the ball, I hate everything. Uh, but you gotta help, you gotta try to help. Your wife's like, well, honey, what are, you gonna, what are you gonna do with them? And she goes, well, oh, you know that shelf right beside the television with nothing on it? And I go, uh, I don't. <laughs> I don't think you're lying to me. I, you know, I'm sure there's a shelf. I've just never, you know, why would you look away from the television? That seems stupid. <laughs> do you know what I mean? Like how many channels does the shelf have? Probably none, probably. And then I go, maybe we don't even need to do it since I'm just now even finding out about the shelf. <laughs> Never even glanced over there, but I want her to be happy. So I go, I go what, are you, what are you thinking? What are you thinking of doing? She goes, well, I want to get a bowl, okay? Then I want to take the balls and put them in the bowl and then put them on the shelf so people can come over and be like, there's that. <laughs> I'm paraphrasing a little bit to quicken the story. Um, she said more words, but I don't remember what they were. It was something of that nature. I'm just trying to shorten it up for you guys. And um, so I look into the cart and there's all these balls, right? There's like so many, there's so many balls. And, but there's not one bowl. And so I start thinking, I got it figured out. I know how to, I know how to get home. We just got to find the, the bowl. 
And so I go, honey, I want to help you. Let's find the bowl. Is that, am I right? Like we just find a bowl and we get to go home because I'd like to help you find the bowl and I would also like to go home. And she goes, well, no, you know, they don't have the exact bowl that I want here. I just, I already checked the bowl section. So we just got a real quick swing by the other craft store on the way home. That's what shit. We got to swing by the other craft store. You guys, I was already mad. At this point, I just blacked out. I don't even remember what happened. But I guess I just started yelling at the store itself. I was like, come on, Michael, get it together. What's going on, Michael? I was waving a glue gun around. Where's Michael? I want to talk to Michael right now. Where is he? I want to speak with Michael, sir. There is no Michael. That's what I thought. I didn't think he would do it to his own people. Maybe Michelle would, but not Michael. And I don't want you guys to think I'm like an angry guy or a bad guy. It's just, I, you know, I'm already mad. Now I find out I got to go across town. I got to see freaking Joanne because Michael doesn't have his stuff together. Are you kidding me right now? So I, I do have three children and sometimes people will say to me, um, you know, Jamie, now you have three children, do you have a favorite kid? Which uh, parents out there, you guys know, you know, you don't have, you know, I do have one. <laughs> you know, I'll just tell you, it doesn't matter, I'll just tell you, uh, it's my neighbor's kid. <laughs> hey, my name is Jamie Lewis, you guys have been so much fun. Nice meeting everybody. <laughs>